Did you hear about this one? Steam VR uh, AMD requirements have been updated. No, I haven't. I haven't heard about uh, most of the Steam VR. I'm not really a big fan of VR, uh, partially because I wear glasses, and I know some people are like, "Well, some of the newer VRs aren't too bad," but I. Eh. I've heard that a lot of the new, the newest VR headsets are pretty good for glasses, people who need glasses. Um, but you know, I I haven't used any of the high end uh, VR headsets myself either, so I'd be interested to try it. But they're such an investment. I mean. You know, we're talking yeah. like what, four or five hundred dollars, and all the games are pretty much only for Windows. But I'm gonna get it and play like one game that might work on Linux. Well, that's what's interesting here. Um, so basically, what happens is, uh, if you're an NVIDIA user, Valve recommends having uh, at least driver version three eight seven dot one two, and they recommend you taking advantage of the uh, graphics drivers PPA made available by Canonical. And for AMD users, Valve recommends a minimum of Mesa 17.3 with Vulkan support and Linux kernel uh, version 4.13. Direct mode requires Xorg 1.2 and Mesa 18.2 and kernel version 4.15. Now, this is all really interesting because this is all f like uh, this is all for the Linux version of Steam VR, and there aren't many games out there that actually take advantage of the Linux version of Steam VR, at least natively, right? Right. So you, I see a lot of comments on my channel where it's like people say, Linux is such a small demographic, it'll never, it'll never like dethrone Windows. But when I look at what Valve's actually doing here, it's kind of hard for me to see Microsoft's dominance as anything but, you know, permanent right yeah like why would valve be investing all of their time and money and resources into things like steam play or developing a native bridge for vr games running under proton to enable them to link against the steam vr native apis or why would they be investing time and money into developing steam vr for linux in the first place the it's like the nichest of the niche you know Here's what yeah. I think. And in the last in the last episode, Ryan was saying that he thought that uh, they're making a uh, they're making a streaming service and they want to have like they want to have all their servers running Linux and being able to play Windows games through Proton and stream it to people. I think there's something different going on. I think Valve are developing a uh, VR backpack, if you will, and it's going to be Linux powered. It's a VR console. You wear it on your back. You put your headset on. All the wires are just self-contained right there. And I think that that, like, that is like a no-brainer. Imagine being able to go to like a laser tag arena type deal, right? Where they have like a network of uh, outside-in, you know, lighthouse tracking setups. So you, your controllers are always like kept track of in this big arena space. And you're wearing your backpack. And a, and a VR headset, and you can run around in this huge space and be playing with other people in the same place. Like, holodeck level of awesome, in my opinion. I don't know. I, that's what I think is going on with all this uh, Steam VR for Linux stuff. Well, uh, speaking of uh, walking around inside of, you know, like a, a, you know, a building and seeing through the, uh, the VR glasses, you know there is actually a company that's setting up a big arcade center doing that. Yeah. Well, I've seen I've seen that some companies are doing that with with the existing Steam like you know, HTC Vive technology, but really the problem is um like the wires getting to the headset, you know? Oh yeah, they've developed their own little pack and it's actually streamed in if I remember correctly, like oh. you know, cuz you know, you got to keep it light, you know, you don't want people lugging around like, you know, 40 pounds of computer <laughs> strapped to your back. Right. Um I can definitely, at least this is from just my opinion, I don't think they're building a streaming service. I don't either. Uh, you, you never know with Valve, because Valve will just do anything. Truthfully, I think this, like Steam Play, is just another uh, jab at Microsoft. Because, you know, you have to remember, I don't think Valve supported Linux because it was the right thing to do, you know, for all of us at least. Uh, I firmly believe they did it because it was best for them as a business. Like, they didn't want to give up control. Because, you know, every if you go back to before Valve did uh, Steam for Linux, what was it? 
It's 2012, right? I'm trying to remember if it was 2012 or 2011 when Steam for Linux uh, dropped. 20, I think it might have been 2012, yeah. They do it because, you know, it's best for them. Like, they need to pressure Microsoft. Because, again, if you go back to that point in time, Microsoft was already talking about the same stuff that they're trying to do right now, which is, hey, you know, uh, everything just should be on our store and everyone should give us a cut. And if you go back to back then, they were trying to do that with Windows 8. Now, granted, Windows 8 was a monstrosity, but they still tried to do it. And I honestly think the only reason Valve did it was to give them an out. Yeah. Like, to give people an option and to pressure Microsoft. And I think Steam Play and, by some small extension, Steam VR is probably more about helping, you know, people want to come to their platform and then support Lino, uh, Windows and Linux easily with one API. But I, I firmly believe that Steam Play is just another attempt to be like, well, you know, with whatever the next version of Windows is, because, you know, there was talk and rumors of uh, the next version of Windows dropping Win32. Right. And that would decimate every game on the market. I don't I don't care what anyone says. If it's not on the Windows store, so like, you know, the new Battlefield game wouldn't work. World of Warcraft wouldn't work. Because they're killing, well, the rumor is they're killing Win32. I don't think they'll do that, but that was the rumor. So, again, I think they're just trying to pressure Microsoft. I fully anticipate Microsoft's going to do that, killing off Win32. And I, I and I, the fact that, like, Tim Sweeney and, and Gabe Newell and a lot of, like, luminaries are, like, we don't trust Microsoft. It shows you, like, the direction that the company is headed in, I think. I remember a story from a couple years back that uh, I can't remember who said it, but one of the devs at Valve said that after they announced uh, Steam for Linux and they started showing the Left 4 Dead 2 benchmarks and showing how f much faster Left 4 Dead 2 ran on OpenGL on, Win on Linux than it did on Windows, like uh, Microsoft actually sent a whole bunch of people to Valve's headquarters and they were like really inquisitive about what they were doing, why they were doing it, and it and like to hear that one guy tell it. And I, I'll find a link to it and I'll put it in the show notes. But you hear this one guy tell it, and it's like they were spooked out of their mind that Valve was doing this. And uh, to bring Steam, which is the which is arguably PC gaming, <laughs> you know, in in many respects it is. And it's like uh, Microsoft was scared of the of valve leaving windows or or bringing it to a platform that is arguably a competitor of windows so it's like why would they why would they be doing this i i think that it's it's like what you said to have an out for for valve you know when microsoft eventually tries to close down windows and turn it into a walled garden like you know the uh the mac iMac OS. is yeah like mac os you know this that it'll let valve move somewhere else and give gamers who've invested their money and their um and their time into steam uh, have a place where they can actually use <laughs> the things that they've bought through this digital platform right oh yeah and and not just that like you know can you imagine if for some and i'm saying very stupid reason like they pulled all win 32 i mean obviously i think if they crush win 32 they will uh, implement some kind of emulation layer or some you know something to maintain support because they're not completing a total other idiots because otherwise they would just crumble overnight but wine this would give valve like a huge boon because they're like look uh you know windows 11 or windows core or windows because you know that's the hip thing now you just name your product windows you don't put the version or anything uh yeah you know it's our platform, just download Linux, it's free, any of them, and install Steam and play all of your old games. You know, and if you already have, you know, Steam, then you can just, you know, up and run and play it. And it's like, you know, in a way, that's that's actually pretty genius. Not to mention, some things work better under Proton than they do on Windows, because, you know, some of them really old games, you know, 4.3, 1024 by 768 looks kind of crap on my 4K monitor. Yeah. And it doesn't look much better, but at least with their scaling, it doesn't screw with everything. Right. I, I love the scaling. I can't believe Wine never got that before, honestly. I, You know, one of my biggest problems with, with playing games through Wine was, like, the fact that Wine would change the resolution of my desktop. Like, it just, it drove me nuts. It's like, why would a non-native app 
ever have the privilege to change my resolution. Anyway, that was, uh, yeah, I'm with you on that. <laughs> But we'd like to hear from you. What do you think about the stories we've covered so far? Uh, why did Valve make Proton? And do you think they're making a, a, a Steam VR console backpack type situation? Let us know. Uh, there's a burgeoning community of thoughtful folks over in the show notes on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the Linux gamer. We'd love to know what you think. What you just heard is an excerpt of the Off Topical podcast. You can head over to offtopical.net and subscribe right now. The feed is freely available and, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. So why don't you just come over and, uh, and, and hit that subscribe button. There's no real subscribe button. You get to use like an app or something. Anyway, podcast, come get it.